Good morning, friends, and welcome to the United Church of Christ Congregational of San Luis Obispo. My name is Pastor Jason, and I greet you in the name of the one who frees us from guilt and shame uh, of the past uh, and frees us to live into the future, to continue pressing on, to continue growing, to continue um, letting God's love transform us and make us whole and make us um, greater than anything we've been before. So welcome. I invite you to arise in spirit and join me in singing forever. To the Lord, our God and King, God's love endures forever. For God is good and is above all things. God's love endures forever. Sing. mighty hand and outstretched arm, God's love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, God's love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing
Amen. What a great way to begin our time together. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us from home, uh, from your living room, from your bedroom, from your kitchen, from your garage. Wherever you are, we are so glad that you're joining us. We believe that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, that you are welcome to be with us. I'm so grateful for the handful of folks who are gathered here this morning uh, safely. I'm happy to see a few friends joining us this morning. Uh, my heart does a little leap anytime I see someone in real life. I'm like... Um, <laughs> You know, Elizabeth and Mary, when they uh, see each other, the babies leap in their womb. Um, yeah, it's, it's really good to see people in real life. So um, I look forward to spending this uh, hour with all of you all. Uh, I invite you to participate in the service by uh, adding comments throughout the service. Um, let us know where you're joining us from, let us know who you're watching with, let us know what's going on with you. I have just a few announcements. Uh, first off, People's Kitchen this month is Monday, October 19th. Uh, Sally and Jana are taking the lead. Thank you so much. And everything just about is taken care of. Uh, we're only looking for a few more cookies and some Halo oranges. So everyone else has already signed up for everything else, and today is only the fourth. We're like 15 days early. So thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would like to help out with cookies or halo oranges, please contact Sally. Uh, next, we have our um, new book discussion beginning this Thursday via Zoom, and we're going to be reading a book by Bradley Jersak. He is a Canadian theologian who's in the Eastern Orthodox tradition. And um, this book looks incredible. It is so well-reviewed, and a lot of people uh, say great things about it. People like Richard Rohr that is really popular in this church. I wanted to share something that um, Brian Zond, who wrote the foreword, uh, shared. And I found myself going, yes, 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 I love this. So listen to what uh, Brian Zahn says in the foreword. The revelation of God could not be contained in a book. It could only be contained in a human life, the life of Jesus Christ. God is like Jesus. Jesus is the message of God. Jesus is what God has to say. Jesus is the full and faithful witness to how God is to be understood. Jesus didn't come to save us from God, as some deplorable theories would lead us to believe. Jesus came to reveal God as Savior. Jesus didn't come to enable God to love us. Jesus came to reveal God as love. Jesus didn't come to reconcile God to the world. Jesus came to reconcile the world to God. Amen. If, if Amen. that resonates with you like it <laughs> resonates with me, um, if you want to join in the, this discussion, um, or if you would just like a copy of the book to read on your own, please let me know. We have copies here at the church, and uh, I also have a hybrid that gets great gas mileage, so um, I'm willing to, to schlep them around to you wherever you are. Just let me know. Um, or you can order a copy of your own also. It's A More Christ-Like God by Bradley Jersak. All right. Uh, also, next week, we're going to have friends from New Life Canines uh, joining us. We're going to have a first responder who is going to share his own story and share how his service dog, Eddie, has uh, changed his life. We're also going to hear from a dog trainer, and it's going to be a powerful service. I hope that you can, um, you know, participate in the service uh, online and be sure to watch and to share it with friends. It's going to be a really powerful service. Um, that is all the announcements that I can think of. I invite us now to transition to our time of gratitudes 
uh, and joys. If you are grateful for someone or for something, I invite you to share it now in the comments section, uh, and then I'll give folks here a chance to share. I'm really grateful that today is World Communion Sunday. Um, And, you know, it's a special day when we recall that we have friends all over the world. We are connected to each other uh, across space and time. And um, we are not alone, friends. We have uh, people throughout the centuries, throughout the millennia, all over the world sharing this special day today. So, it, you know what? It's time for World Communion Sunday. Can I get an amen? Amen. Um, so, th- this is an opportunity for us to remember friends uh, all over the world. Uh, what about you? What are you grateful for? Who are you grateful for? If you have something you'd like to share, I will. raise your hand. <laughs> Christy. I'm very grateful that I'm going on vacation on Wednesday. Yay! Christy's going on vacation on Wednesday. I'm excited. I know you're excited. <laughs> you know <it. laughs> Praise God. Uh, Diane? I'm grateful for, and I'm glad you mentioned about world, because yes. I'm grateful for my friends who have contacted me all over the world with reassurance and prayers and and lifting us up here and whatever we're going through. I'm grateful that they keep in touch with us and most of them are expatriate well they live there now Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh but uh it it, they need as much encouragement when they see what we're going through so it's good to have that connection yes and it's lifted me up amen maybe world communion sunday should be like once a month right now (laughs) yes leslie I'm grateful that we are in the red zone and that I get to legally work. Amen. 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 And and my schedule is filling in. Wonderful. We're in the red zone. Leslie can go back to work. And um, yeah, friends, let's stay in the red zone. Let's continue wearing our masks, washing our hands, social distancing. This is, is the time to continue being smart and being safe. Any other? Yes, Anastasia. I'm grateful to see some faces out there that I haven't seen in months. My yes. heart feels so warm when I get to see your smiles yes. or yes. your eyes smiling because mostly we're seeing <laughs> Right, smiling. right, right. Yeah, so, yeah. It's good to see all of you out there. Um, I'm trying to remember um, who talked about uh, smizing, yes. smiling <laughs> with your <laughs> eyes. Who was that? Eyes. That was, uh, I think it was a supermodel. Um, you can smile with your eyes. Uh, you can smile with your mask on. Smile with your eyes. All right. Are there any other uh, gratitudes before we move on? One. All right. Then I'm going to turn it over to Richard, who's going to lead us in the call to worship and the opening prayer. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I feel very honored to be here as liturgist on World Communion Sunday. Uh, this, uh, this is a very special day, and as Jason said, we need, we need World Communion Sunday. I think every Sunday, not just once a month. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's my status yeah, right now. Uh, let us stand, all stand together in spirit uh, for the call to worship. <laughs> from north and south, from east and west, we come. God's God's people people everywhere everywhere are are called called to love and and serve one another. From every class, every race, every status. From little ones with sippy cups (laughs) to elders with overflowing hearts. God's God's people people are called to witness to to hope, to to offer peace to a a shattered world. world. Amen. Amen. And now join me in the opening prayer, please. Loving Loving God. God. Let us be open to your presence among your people, those gathered for worship, and all of your people throughout creation. May we receive you fully and respond to you wholeheartedly. Amen.
That song always gives me uh, goosebumps, and uh, it is so wonderful to have uh, the musicians here to really make this song uh, sound so full and rich, and it is so wonderful to have Anastasia now joining us. Um, I am going to be reading from Matthew chapter 21 before our time of prayer and meditation And uh, this is Jesus talking here. This is uh, the parable of the wicked tenants. Jesus says, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, right? Remember, vineyard is a code word for uh, God's realm. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. And Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Thank you. 
Eternal God, on this morning when we uh, celebrate World Communion Sunday, we pause to be mindful how we are all interconnected, God. You have created us to be together, to live interdependently. Sometimes, God, friends in other traditions remember this better than we do. I think of our friends in the Buddhist tradition who remember the interconnectedness of all life, how our actions uh, impact one another. God, help us be mindful of our connection to each other. We pause now to think about this web that connects all of us, all people, God, and also other forms of life, our beloved animal friends, all of nature. God, we are all connected, and we are all longing for healing and wholeness right now. We thank you, God, for this beautiful world, for every beautiful face, every beautiful creature that we encounter. God, help us do our part to heal and to restore everyone and everything. We lift up all of the people, all of the places, all of the situations which are weighing on our minds this morning, God. We lift them up to you knowing that you are with us, you permeate us, you surround us, you make us whole, God. So we lift up D, the Mastery family, we lift up Vince and Keith and everyone affected by fires. We lift up everyone who is grieving this morning. We lift up Mike and Kathy and Sanja and small business owners. We lift up Ray and Fritz. And loving God, Paul told us to pray for our leaders, and so we pray for our president. We lift up now, God, others by name uh, or silently in our hearts. James, Howard, Emily, Sethis, Lexi. Kimmy, Sierra, Kendra, Janice, Sharon and Bob, Ernie and Mary, Janet and John, Danny and Nancy. We thank you, God, that 
we are not alone in the work of healing and restoring. You have called us together. You have called people over all the earth to continue the mission that Jesus started 2,000 years ago. And God, we lift up the prayer that he told his very first disciples to pray. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taken from Philippians uh, chapter 3, verses 4b through 14. And Paul is speaking to the Philippians. And Paul says, Even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as a loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as a loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things. And I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death if somehow I may, may, may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining for what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Richard. Paul reminds me of another person in the ancient world named Pheidippides. Is anyone familiar with that name, Pheidippides? Give me a thumbs up in the comment section uh, at home. It took me quite a while to rehearse the name. I even looked up how to pronounce it on YouTube. Pheidippides was a witness to the great battle between the Persian army and the Athenian army um, on the plain of Marathon, which was 25 miles away from Athens. The much larger, much more intimidating and frightening Persian army landed there on Marathon in 490 BCE to begin its conquest of Athens. And Athenians like Pheidippides were absolutely terrified. And nevertheless, he went with the Athenian army who was expected to be decimated, uh, crushed, annihilated. Uh, He saw them 
ultimately be victorious over the Persians against all odds. The overjoyed, ecstatic Pheidippides ran all the way from Marathon to Athens uh, to let everyone in Athens know that the Persians had been defeated. And when he finally arrived, he was absolutely exhausted and dehydrated. He burst into the city assembly, and with his very last breath, he shouted, Rejoice! We were victorious. And then he collapsed and died. We are victorious. We are free. We no longer have to be afraid. I tell you what, being able to share those words with family and friends is about the only thing I can think of to make me want to run 25 miles. Uh, or maybe a big hungry animal chasing me. Um, but, but that's it. That's it. Two things. Uh, I know that there are people, many people, including f- folks here in our church uh, and their family members who run marathons, right? Marathons were named after this run that Phidippides ran, uh, 25 miles. There's people who do this on purpose. Um, Lord love them. Lord love them. I have never felt called to run a marathon, though. Uh, I have many gifts. That is not one of them. Uh, I think Paul was, though. Uh, I think he was called to run a a metaphorical marathon, a, a spiritual marathon. And he's running to share... Uh, the good news that the powers of sin and death and separation no longer have the final word. Uh, for so long, that, that was it. People are separate, and, and there is sin and brokenness, and then there is death, and that was it. Um, Paul is running to share the good news that there's more. There's more than these old foes. God has done something new in and through Christ Jesus. God has been victorious over these old foes. And because of that, we can be too. And this good news gave him the energy and the stamina to run with all of his might, just like Pheidippides. Only, instead of running back to the people that Paul had known all of his life, he ran to share the good news with people who were strangers to him, a people that he used to avoid, people he used to judge, even persecute. Paul ran away from everything that he had known before, and he ran toward these new people, because he now realized that they were not his enemy. Uh, Separation no longer had uh, the ultimate word. He realized that God had made uh, them, the Gentiles, God had made them too, and that they were his beloved siblings, just like the Jewish people. Separation was over. It had ended in Christ Jesus. Paul realized that the Gentiles were not his enemies, and they were not totally different from him either. He didn't need to persecute them or avoid them or fear them. The only thing that he had to do was love them, embrace them. And when Paul realized this, He experienced shame and guilt over the way that he had treated Gentiles in the past. Paul reflected on his past. He reflected on how he tried to discover life's ultimate meaning and purpose through his upbringing and through his experiences. Listen to what Paul said that Richard just read. Uh, He was circumcised on the 
That was tradition. He was a member of the people of Israel, the religious uh, in-crowd of the day. He was of the tribe of Benjamin, which was like the most powerful tribe, good tribe to be in. He was a Hebrew born of Hebrews. Uh, as to the law, he says, he was a Pharisee. He was an overachiever. Uh, as to zeal, he was a persecutor of the church, this new Jesus movement. Uh, and as to righteousness under the law, he was blameless. He had checked off all of the boxes that his society and probably his family said to check off in order to be a good person. And yet, even after doing all of these things, he still felt this separation. He still felt estrangement, and he longed for something else, for something more. Maybe you've felt uh, like this before, like you were doing everything that people told you to do, everything that was expected of you, and you still longed for something more. You knew that there was something more than just what people told you to do. Well, Paul experienced that something more when Jesus called him to be his disciple. And he called him to invite the Gentiles into the family of God. And I love Paul's reaction. At first, he said, no stinking way. Are you kidding? Uh, they eat the wrong foods. They don't know our traditions. They don't know how to sing our songs. No stinking way, God. They are unclean. And God said, Paul, don't call unclean what I call clean. Don't call stranger who I call beloved. These people are your family now, so be with them and love them. And to Paul's credit, Paul was a work in progress, like all of us, but to Paul's credit, he did. He embraced the Gentiles. Yet he still regretted his past. He still couldn't shake the memories of who he had been before and what he'd done before. He says, Whatever gains I had in my old life, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ, because of his new life. All the separation and judgment I engaged in, I now regret. Paul reminds me uh, of some contemporary figures like Christian Picciolini, who's the founder of the Free Radicals Project. I don't know if you've heard of this project. Uh, Picciolini had been a white supremacist. He'd been a neo-Nazi in the 80s and 90s, and he hated anyone not like him. Um, and yet, when he actually met people, talked with them, and got to know them, uh, these people that he was supposed to hate, he just couldn't do it. Uh, he actually started a record store in order to sell um, neo-Nazi records and to sell racist uh, propaganda. And he started to meet all kinds of people who would come into the record store. He met uh, black people and Jewish people and gay people, all people he was supposed to hate. Well, he started talking with them, and he experienced uh, their shared humanity, and he realized that they were just like him. Uh, the final straw was bonding with a black teenager whose mother was battling breast cancer just like his own mother was. He knew that he had to change. He had to let go of who he had been before. So he founded the Free Radicals Project, which travels around the world using intervention strategies and outreach work to help young, 
predominantly white men leave racist and violence-based groups, both in real life and online chat boards, where so many people become radicalized. He calls himself a bridge builder uh, between them and the resources that they need to de-radicalize. Uh, Christian Picciolini, thank you, thank you. I think Paul is a bridge builder too. He is bridging the gap uh, between Jew and Gentile. He's trying to let everyone know that in Christ they are God's beloved. They are forgiven, they are reconciled, they are a new creation. Everyone. He's also trying to remind himself that he has been forgiven for his past. He's trying to remind himself that he is running a marathon. That he's on the right track and he's making good time even. But he's not at the finish line yet. Um, he's not done yet. But he's also not where he used to be either. He's not the Gentile hating or fearing person that he used to be. God is helping him grow. And that's what gives him the strength to persevere and to, to be honest about his past. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. That's what Paul said. Forgetting what lies behind. Forgetting what I used to be. I strain forward to what lies ahead. Paul shows us, I think, a healthy way to think about the things in our past that we regret. The lapses of judgment, the mistakes, the life-denying choices that are part of all of our lives. We've all made mistakes. Paul doesn't ignore his mistakes, his regrets. Uh, he's honest about them. I've come to regard these as loss, he said. Uh, trying to ignore our regrets only makes the guilt and the shame associated with them even stronger. We try to suppress them. We try not to think about it. But you know what? Uh, it will continue to come up even stronger until it becomes overwhelming and you have to admit it and you have to change. You have to grow. The way to move forward is to be honest about mistakes, to admit them, and then think about what we can do now to make things better, to make things right, to make amends uh, is the language in recovery. I am so grateful that we read Breathing Underwater together in our book club because I learned so much about the 12-step tradition. And I learned how it just merges seamlessly with spirituality. So, uh, making amends is another uh, way to think of this. Acknowledging the past, yet seizing the opportunity now to make things right, to make amends. Strain forward to what lies ahead. To strain forward, to move forward, to do something, to continue running this marathon. And to run it with hope and courage, uh, knowing that something good is waiting for you. Um, not running uh, haphazardly, but running with all of your might. There's something good waiting for you as you transform. Something better than anything you've known or experienced before. And that is what kept Paul running and kept him changing, I think. When you look at some of the things that Paul said that 
some of us have a hard time with, they were in his earlier letters. And they reflected who Paul was and what Paul thought at the time. And yet, by the time we're getting to letters like Philippians and Romans, which were probably the last letters that he wrote, there's a new maturity and a sense of inclusion. Um, Paul was growing. I wonder what would have happened if Paul had lived another maybe 20 years, if he weren't executed. Um, And he lived and really let this grace continue to work in and through him. This passion, this energy is what kept Paul running. He knew that beloved community, which included the Gentiles, was waiting for him. His former life in Judaism was good. It was meaningful to him for a time. But this new thing was even better. God had something greater and bigger in store for him, even before Paul knew it. And this morning, beloved friends, I say to you with absolute conviction that God has something greater and bigger in store for you and in store for our faith community. Don't let your past bog you down. Don't settle for your past, the way you've always done things, the way you've always thought. Let it go. There's there's something even better waiting for you. God wants you to continue running, continue journeying, just like Paul, just like Pheidippides. God wants you to continue running so that we can share the good news of God's victory with our people. Pheidippides shared the good news with Athenians. But for Paul and for us, we are to share the good news with everyone. Uh, The definition of our people changed with Jesus. And suddenly, everyone is God's beloved. Who are our people? Everyone is our people. Everyone belongs in the family of God. Everyone is God's beloved. In a few minutes, we're going to sing One Bread, One Body. It's a vision of what life could be like if we let go of the way that things have always been we let go of our regrets and our fears, and we just love one another. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man no more. Many the gifts, many the works, one in the Lord of all. Grain of the fields, scattered and grown, gathered to one for all. We can experience this. We can see this here and now, and we can live this if we join Paul in forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Beloved friends, may we continue running this marathon in order to share good news with all. Amen. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you for this marathon to which you have called us. The same marathon as Paul. uh, Reaching out to all life, to all human beings, to all of creation, to nature itself, to let everyone and everything know that there is a new reality emerging right here in the midst of the old one. God, help us be bridge builders 
to this new reality. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to uh, consider sharing a gift to support and to strengthen the mission, the ministries of this church. Uh, I thank you for your faithful giving. We um, just had the Chronicle come out this week, and um, I noticed when I was reading it, oh my goodness, the, you know, the faith giving, it's, it's different from, the, from what we had projected. I want to let everyone know when we uh, drew up the budget last year, we were still planning on having our parking lot sale which generated like $4,000. And um, thanks a lot, COVID. We didn't have a parking lot sale this year. So that's why there's a really big discrepancy between what we had projected and what actually happened. So just wanted to, uh, to share that. Thank you for your faithful giving uh, to the church and uh, to New Life Canines. Um, I'm delighted that they're going to be here next week to share more about their mission of uh, bringing healing through the power of the human canine bond. So uh, thank you, friends. Thank you for remembering the church now. Praise God, one love we all may share. Receive these gifts we offer, gracious God, and multiply them to meet the needs in your world. Amen. I invite you now to join me in singing One Bread, One Body, and think about these lyrics as we sing them.
body in this one loving Lord. We are scattered, we grow, we serve, we love, we plant more seeds, and then those grow, they go on to serve, <clears throat> and on and on. That's what we are called to do. Beloved friends, on the first Sunday of the month, uh, we invite you to join us in celebrating communion. Hopefully you have uh, something at home that you can uh, join us with. Uh, we're using uh, gluten-free uh, pita bread and organic grape juice this morning. So we remember that on the night in which Jesus gave himself up, he took the bread and he broke it and he shared it with his disciples and he said, take and eat this all of you. This is the bread of life. This is the bread which will help you uh, admit your past, acknowledge your past, and to go into a new direction, uh, into a more loving, a more life-sustaining, life-giving direction. Do this in memory of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the his disciples, and he said, take and drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant that God enters into with everyone and everything. There is now no separation from the love of God. Please pray with me. Loving God, we thank you for the signs of your faithfulness, the grape and the grain. God, you plant them, they grow, they nourish, they plant more, they nourish more, and on and on. God, this is your way, and this is the way that you have called your people to be. So we ask now that you pour out your spirit on the elements that we have this morning, may they be for us the bread of life and the cup of the new covenant. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Will you join me in the prayer after communion? Eternal God, we give thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, lift me up and I shall be by faith in heaven eternally a higher plane than I have found. Oh, plant me God Heavenly 
eternally a higher plane than I have found. Oh, plant me, God, on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. No sun may dwell where these abound. My prayer, my aim is higher ground. Oh, lift me up and I shall be by faith in heaven eternally a higher place. Beloved friends, may the light of God's love shine on you, in you, and through you as you go into the world in ways that you can right now, ways that are safe right now, to serve God's people. Go in peace. Amen. And I invite you to join me in saying the serenity prayer, and we're going to say the original prayer full serenity prayer this morning uh, as Reinhold Niebuhr wrote it. God, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, Taking, as Jesus did, the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next.
beloved friends, it was so good to spend this time with you. Keep being safe. Uh, we will see you as soon as it is safe to do so. And um, I can't wait until that day. Bye, friends.